Hey everybody, this is Don Walters coming to you from The Clinical Trials Guru. Again, that website is www.theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Hey, Dan and I received the question, and I believe this question was about um, what equipment, uh, what type of facility you need to have set up in order to um, run an um, investigational uh, site or clinical research uh, site. And uh, I'm out in the parking lot right now of a facility. They're nice enough to let me do a walkthrough. I'm not going to let you see the name of the company just to protect their confidentiality. Uh, but I'll be able to show you some of the equipment that they have, uh, the different rooms that they have, and I'll describe what these rooms are used for. So I'm hoping this answers your question and this helps. If not, just uh, send Dan and I an email and let us know if we need to tweak our response a little bit to... Um, to address the full issue. So we're going to get started here. I'm going to be holding the camera so it might be a little up and down and moving around a little bit while I'm walking. Um, will hurt my foot so I'm going to be hopping a little bit. So uh, bear with me but uh, we're going to get through this and we're going to do it. Here we go. Now first we're outside. I'm going to walk. This is the front of the building. And let's see what we got. And they've got a sign on this door. And the sign on this door is uh, no solicitation. And I think, first of all, I know this might sound crazy, but I think that's good. Because one of the things I know myself when I was running a research site is that my biggest concern was that somebody's going to come through that door, walk through that door unexpectedly, trying to sell you something. And they're going to see somebody that they know. And that might make that client uncomfortable. We're supposed to be protecting their uh, identity. Um, and I think uh, just leaving yourself open for solicitation can uh, put you at risk for that. That's my thought. And obviously this is their thought too. So here we go. I'm going to go in and this is their lobby. You have to have a lobby, a place where people can come in and sit and um, wait to be seen. Um, they've got a little TV here, which is good. You know, you want to keep people uh, occupied. Uh, there are some places... Might have a TV and, and some magazines and stuff for people to read. So this is a lobby. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It's just adequate. All right. There's another room over there, but we won't go in that room. They have a Xerox machine, um, fax machine, uh, printer. And they also have their uh, hookup in that room for their wireless system, and we'll talk about that later. Now, this is uh, their uh, meeting room. And these meeting rooms can also be used as more like a multi-purpose room. Like I said, the primary function is, is as a meeting room. A lot of times when you do your site initiation visits, the monitors will come out and want to meet everybody in one room. So you need a space for everyone to set. It doesn't have to be as big as this, but um, as long as it's big enough to sit how many people are going to be attending. Uh, this room is also sometimes used uh, for monitor visits. It looks like they're expecting a monitor now because they have all their files and stuff laid out uh, on the table. Uh, and also, too, another thing you can do in this room is use this room to um, meet with subjects and uh, do your screening, uh, your ratings, and so forth. So here we go. Obviously, you have to have a bathroom. Clients have to have come in or subjects, they have to have a place to go to the bathroom. You need to have a bathroom in whatever office the building is set up. Moving down the hallway here. Okay, this room that we're going to turn to my left, it's a pretty good size examination room. There's an examination table, there's a shelf there, and there's one of those little rolling carts with an EKG machine. There's a desk, a chair, uh, looks like blood pressure cuffs. Uh, you need to have those things. Um, I think it's good to have one of those little rolling carts because it looks like they can fit multiple EKG machines on that uh, rolling cart which helps when uh, you're doing multiple studies um, then you don't have to keep switching uh, the EKG machines back and forth you can just leave them on there keep them labeled so you know which machine goes to which study and you just roll them over to the exam table where the person's laying down and hook them up and do do your thing um, here's a table where the um, the doctor can sit and do their work they can interview clients there to Dr. Cam when they're uh, doing their screening process or rating or whatever. Uh, also too, you can use this room as a room for the uh, monitors as well. Uh, monitors can come in here and use this room to, uh, to do the audit of your books and your charts. So here we go. 
All right, move in here. I'm going to turn around in this next room here, it's a small room. It um, looks like their lab room. That's exactly what it is. Uh, they've got all their lab kits and stuff stored in here. There's a sink. Uh, the sink is probably used where they break up the dry ice or the, also, too, if they get any things on your hands. One of the things you could use on this sink is uh, the another little attachment can go in there for eye wash in case somebody gets uh, some contaminants in their eyes or the face. They can immediately wash the face off, but this will also work as well. Uh, I'm looking right here. There is a centrifuge. You have to have a centrifuge. And uh, they've got cabinet space. You need a space, cabinet space to store things. And of course, they have the shelves here. Let's go over here. And they've got their uh, certificates on the wall uh, showing that um, their CLIA waiver, as well as uh, people who are someone who's certified to do uh, phlebotomy work. And they have a phlebotomy chair, which is good to have as well, where you can draw your blood. All right, let's move on out of here. So those are some of the things you have to have. Oh, there was one other thing I saw in the hallway here. Ah, here we go. They have one of those uh, scales, and it looks like it has the um, maybe a little bar to raise up to measure their height. And it's um, it's a mechanical scale. Those are good. And a lot of times that's what the um, sponsors like to see is the mechanical scales. Uh, in the exam room, I also saw on the floor an electronic scale, so they have both. They have to be calibrated. I believe every six months they have to be calibrated. Now in this room here, it's dark, but let's turn the lights on in here, even though my camera is adjusting, which is good. This is another exam room. It's a smaller room, which again is, is just enough space as exam table. In fact, they got some charts or books or something sitting over there. Here's a desk um, where the doctor can sit or monitor can sit in here and again it can use this room for auditing the charts and going through the books also to your coordinators or raters can use this room to uh, do their ratings and screening process and it looks like some sort of device here for testing um, so we got all that set up moving here to the left I'm going to go into another room uh, this is a larger room here those books up there and stuff, I'm not going to go in close, but to tell me those are uh, regulatory books, uh, SOP books and stuff like that, uh, site operation uh, procedures on how things are done. You have to have that. You have to have a book for uh, conducting, showing the sponsor exactly what you do uh, on each procedure. Um, let's see what else we have here. You have this next room we're moving into. It looks like a room where they store all their charts for each study. It looks like each one of these um, shelves pertain to a particular study. And these are the different charts and stuff. And this room here is their med cabinet room. Alrighty, let's allow me to open it up, but I won't go all the way in. Uh, so that this they have, and here's the thing with your med cabinet, you want to have double lock. In this case, they have triple lock. The door I came through has a, a lock on it. This door has a lock on it. And there's a metal cabinet that has a lock on it. Looks like they've got stuff stored here. Uh, it's like a shelf of storing mats. And here's two type refrigerators. Um, I'm told the bottom one is just a regular refrigerator. It gets down from zero and up. Um, or I think it gets as low as 20 degrees. And then the top one is a sub-zero uh, refrigerator. So you need a sub-zero refrigerator. Uh, these things that are stuck on the uh, cabinet, as well as on the uh, top of this refrigerator, which you really can't see, there um, it's a uh, temperature log for keeping track of the daily temperature. You want to have that uh, set up. So anyway, those are some of the key things that you have to have when setting up a research site. This site is about, um, I think it's about. 2,300 square feet, which is, I think, is pretty big. Uh, it all depends on um, what you're looking to do. Um, I just want to get that right so you can see me okay. It all depends on what you're looking to do, how many studies you're looking to take on. Um, and that's how you're going to uh, look at the amount of space that you have. Uh, if, you, if you go into a building you think that you're going to grow, if you can get a good deal on a building ahead of time, uh, and get that extra space, do so. If you really plan on growing, if you think that you're going to start a study and stay exactly where you're at, then get the building that's going to facilitate that and don't spend that extra money. 
Uh, one of the other things you're going to look at too is whether or not you're going to hire hardwire every room that you're going to have to hook up a computer in. Uh, you could either do that when you have your phone lines installed or you can also, um, one of the things they've done here, they just have it hardwired in one room or two rooms actually because they the med rooms are hardwired because of the e, uh, the ECG machines. Well, the set up so that they can transmit, so it's not really hot wire for uh, computers. That's something else to think about too when you're doing the EKG room. Make sure that the rooms that uh, you have those EKG machines in there that you can uh, transmit from those rooms and you can go over that with whoever sets up your phone system. As far as your computer, uh, this place they do wireless throughout this entire building so in that first room where they have their um, Xerox machines and so forth uh, they have a wireless modem in there that transmits throughout this whole building. So when the monitors come in or anyone comes in with the computer, uh, they just give them the code and they can lock right into that and do their work. Uh, and that works. The monitor will ask you that uh, when you go through their, their little survey that they give you to find out if you have the equipment. Those are some of the things they're going to ask. They're going to ask you if you have wireless or a system throughout or your heart wire to each room or do you have a cook up. They're going to ask you what type of computer you have. Is it, and they want to know if you have a computer that's adequate for handling all the transmitting of data and so forth and what type of windows do you have, the whole works. Um, again, you need a Xerox machine, you're going to need a uh, fax machine, you need a printer. Uh, one place I went in they had a printer, fax, it's all one combination uh, type machine so that works for them. Uh, this place has a Xerox machine and a, and a um, and a printer, they're separate. Uh, you need your uh, centrifuge, your uh, weight scale, uh, you need something to, either you can use tape or you can use one of those adjustable uh, things on those weight, those mechanical scales to uh, determine the height of a person because when they come in for physical you got to get their weight and their height. Uh, else you're going to determine the BMI which is a, uh, a lot of times part of doing these studies is determining the BMI of a person and see if they qualify. Um, you need your medical exam room, you need a place for the monitors to meet, you need a place for all your staff to meet and meet with the monitors as well as your investigator, your doctor. Uh, you need, a, again, an exam room, you need a place for your doctor to sit and write their notes and also screen and, and uh, interview the clients or the subjects. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Um, I think I've covered everything. If not, you, know, you can always email Dan and I for more questions and we'll address those issues. Again, this is Don signing off from The Clinical Trials, guru.com. Again, that website is www.theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Thank you very much.